morning is all laid out for us in the worship folder, Fragrant Sacrifices and Offerings. So let us rise for the confession and absolution. <coughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. For his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn of praise. <laughs>
us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <coughs> the gratitude for Lutheran women in mission, their years of sacrificial service and gracious offering for the work of the kingdom, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
If so, I will change my mind about the evil I intend to do to them for their evil deeds. Tell them, the Lord says, this. If you will not listen to me or follow the instructions I set before you, or listen to my servants, the prophets, whom I promptly sent you even though you wouldn't listen, then I will do this to the temple, what I did to Shiloh, and make this city a curse for all the nations in the world. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah say these things in the Lord's temple. But as soon as Jeremiah finished everything the Lord ordered him to tell all the people, the priests, the prophets, and all the people took hold of him and said, You must die. <coughs> Why do you prophesy in the Lord's name and say, This temple will be like Shiloh, and this city will become ruins, so that nobody will live here? And all the people gathered to oppose Jeremiah in the Lord's temple. And Judah's princes heard about these things. They left the king's palace, went up to the Lord's temple, and sat in the entrance, the new gate of the Lord's temple. Then the priests and the prophets said to the princes and all the people, this man is condemned to die because he prophesied against the city as you yourselves have heard. Then Jeremiah said to all the princes and all the people, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this temple everything you heard. Now live right and do what is right and listen to the Lord your God and the Lord will change his mind about the evil he threatens to do to you. I am now in your hands. Do to me what you please and what you think is right. But realize this. If you kill me, this city and the people living in it are responsible for killing an innocent man. Because it is true that the Lord sent me to you to tell you all these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
told you, dear children, I have tried to be like him and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Sexual sins, anything unclean or greed, shouldn't even be mentioned among you. This is the right attitude for holy people. No shameful things, foolish talk or coarse jokes. These aren't proper. Instead, give thanks. Be sure of this, that nobody who is immoral, unclean, or greedy, a greedy person worships an idol, has any share in the kingdom of Christ, who is God. Don't let anybody fool you with meaningless words. These things bring God's anger and punishment on those who don't obey the truth. So don't share their ways. Once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, since light produces everything good, and righteous, and true. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. He was driving out a devil who was speechless. When the devil had gone out, the speechless man spoke. The people were amazed, but some of them said, He drives out the devils with the help of Beelzebub, who rules over the devils. Others, meaning to test him, demanded that he show them some wonderful proof from heaven. Knowing what they were thinking, he said to them, If one part of any kingdom fights against another part, it loses its people, and one house falls on another. If the devil fights against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this, because you say Beelzebub helps me drive out the devils. But if Beelzebub helps me drive out the devils, who helps your sons drive them out? That's why they'll be your judges. But if God's finger helps me drive out the devils, then God's kingdom has come to you. When a strong man, completely armed, guards his palace, his property is not disturbed. But when someone stronger than he attacks him and defeats him, he'll take away his whole armor in which he trusted and divide the plunder. Anyone who is not with me is against me, and anyone who doesn't help me gather scatters. When an unclean spirit comes out of a man, he goes through dry places looking for rest, but doesn't find any. Then he says, I'll go back to the home I left. He comes and finds it swept and decorated. When he goes and takes home with him seven other spirits worse than himself, and they go in and live there, in the same, in the end, that man is worse than he was before. When Jesus said this, a woman in the crowd called loud to him, Blessed is the mother who bore you and nursed you. Yes, he said, but blessed are those who listen to God's word and keep it. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and obedient performance of his word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks Thanks be to the Lord Jesus Christ. And now profess our Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, bearing 
may be seated for the sermon hymn, and we'll sing the first five verses. So when the propane lamps go out and the campfire 
goes down and the RVers have to turn off their generators, it's unbelievable how dark it is. And how brilliant even just a struck match can be. Or a little flashlight like this. On this Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday, we celebrate a light. Or as Paul described in the beginning, and is also the theme of our worship, a fragrance of God's grace. In contrast to a dark world, Israel is described as a tiny nation, and it really is, and even today, and it, as it was in biblical times, geographically, it was no bigger than 25% of the state of Missouri. But yet it was gifted with a brilliant light that God expected his mercy and his grace to come through that nation for all the world to give testimony to God's love for mankind. So Lutheran Women's Missionary League is such also a light of God's mercy. The focus of this organization is exclusively in support of missions of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, of which we are a part of, along with 6,600 other congregations. This organization's motto is serve the Lord with gladness. Through acts of mercy and witness, LWML, since its founding, has gathered and given to worldwide mission efforts $316 million. That is not to say, and that's above and beyond what the LWML does locally in our state, in our county, in our community. So let me just share with you some of the light that is being shed in our own neighborhood through our own LWML right here at Trinity. This past summer, donations were given to our youth group so that they could go to Texas for the uh, youth event. Annually, I think it was just a couple weeks ago, the Golden Age Honors Day. It's an annual event. These are also service projects by the different circles. The visitors' cards are sent out to anybody who comes to visit us to welcome them back and to give thanks that you, they worship with us. The baptism banners are all made and presented by the LWML. Also, our children in the Lutheran School Association and also our public school children are also remembered at their baptism birthdays. All the baptismal towels, hand-stitched. <coughs> We're also involved in the community with the spouse abuse. The Crossroads Ministries in uh, Warsaw, which is pro-life, also involved with the uh, Lutheran Association of Missionary Pilots, and that's to uh, bring the Word of God with pastors and teachers uh, to those northern um, uh, mission spots that uh, can't be accessed by road in northern Canada and Alaska. LML also supports the Lutheran Good Shepherd Mission, also called LUMA in Kansas City. Mission Central in Iowa, which is direct um, uh, support for missionaries uh, part-time, one year, half year, uh, two year stints, while volunteers right here. And one of the interesting things I was told is that at the end of the financial year, each group or each part of the LWML, there's $5 left. Anything in excess of $5 at the end of the financial year goes to food for the poor. Trinity Congregation. Isaiah had this in mind in chapter 60, verse 1, that you and I also keep our lives lit when he writes the fuel. Arise, shine, for 
your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you. So I'm going to take this little light, and I can turn it on. And really, it didn't make a whole big a difference, did it, in this room? Compared to those lights? And if we were to take these lights outside right now and turn them on outside, they wouldn't really mean a whole lot either, would they? But... If the sun goes down, these lights become very important. And if the electricity goes out and these lights go down and worse in the uh, darkness and the sun has gone down, this particular light becomes very important, doesn't it? In showing our way out of this building <coughs> and out of our way to home. In Jesus, we have the great light of God. He has come to bring us comfort and hope. A light, so to speak, turned on at the end of the dark tunnel. A small town in Barhead, Alberta, Canada. A classmate and I were snowboiling up there. It's 20 below. 6 p.m. It's been dark for three hours already, and I'm hungry. But I'm also separated from my classmate. And I'm out there at least a mile away from the house in the middle of I don't know where, and it is dark. He warned me that if we got separated, to shoot straight for the yard light, his wife would have it on. <coughs> She did, and we got back. <laughs> Just a little 100 watt light bulb in all of that darkness. And I wasn't afraid. I knew exactly where home was, even though I really didn't know where I was. And there are those who say, and we may be tempted in our living. Do I really need a light? Isn't mine sufficient? I've heard it a number of times on calls. Oh, pastor, you know, I really don't need to have to go to church. I go out often. I feed my livestock on Sunday morning. Or I go hunting. And I'm with God in all of creation. It's true. God is everywhere, but God's light isn't turned on everywhere. When was the last time a steer in the field said to you, God loves you? <coughs> or a cornstalk said, as you pass by, your sins are forgiven. God's light is generated in Jesus, who says, I am the way, the truth, and the light, and the life. God's light. Our way to him is brightly lit through his means of grace, and that grace is given to us in his word preached and heard, studied and meditated and prayed over in washing in the waters of holy baptism where we're declared to be brought into the light. You are mine. And this morning we come to receive his real presence in holy communion. That's where God's light is. In real time, in a real place. Right here. This is where he is turned on in the darkness of our lives. <clears throat> Turn for the light. <clears throat> it's necessary. 
to make a distinction between God and man, between spiritual and physical life. In the earthly, human affairs, man's judgment is enough. For these things, no need light but that of reason. God has given us an intellect. Hence, God and scriptures do not teach us how to build houses, make clothing, marry, wage war, sail the seas, and miraculously fly. What God has given us in our natural abilities is enough. But in divine things, things concerning God, and in which we must conduct ourselves, why I am here, what am I supposed to do while I'm here, and to be acceptable with God, and to have joy with one another and with my God, and find direction and value in my life. Human nature is absolutely clueless. Because of our dark side of life. Sin. Call it human nature. There's even a newer term out. Self-esteem. In the dark. On our own. Blind. Unable to recognize in the slightest degree what is what with God. <coughs> Lights out. <coughs> so by nature, what we think of in our own mind as we turn to the dark side of our life, we decide that somehow I can please God and be saved. And so we say to ourselves, as all other religions, truly I must build a sanctuary <coughs> by which I can house this God and at least keep him in a place where I can get a hold of him when I'm in trouble. Truly, I must say certain prayers and pray at certain times. I must say certain liturgies and have rites, eat and drink uh, certain kinds of food, worship on certain days, sacrifice a certain amount of health, wealth. This kind of thinking in religion is sheer imagination. It is gloom. It is darkness, says Paul. And the question has to come, if we're in that mindset, how much is enough to be recognized by God as a light? Paul says and warns us, take no part in unfruitful works of darkness. Nothing is more offensive to God than the presumption that my works are better than the son that he has given us. Thanks be to God who gives us the light. In Jesus we have the most perfect eternal light. Jesus went through dark. The darkness of our death. The resurrection. And he says as I have risen from the dead, so will you. Come with me. I am your light. I'll show you the way. When we see Jesus in Scripture, we know exactly who God is and where we are going and how his disposition is towards me today. In baptism, we're brought into the light and we're pointed in the direction of the light towards Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is here continually like a parent with a four-year-old nudging the head towards a goal and a direction that Mother wants us to go. And the Lord wants to be with us in heaven. In Holy Communion this morning, we are assured, in, with, and under the bread and wine, Jesus is always with us. Physically. We're not alone as we go through this tunnel of darkness around us. With the light of Jesus in front of us, no matter how dim it may seem to be, we always know where we're going. Yes, we have lights and they're good for here.
From the light of the carpenter, <coughs> we can learn to build a house. And if you're smart enough, you can teach yourself. To paint a picture, we learn from an artist. From a farmer, we learn how to plant and harvest. From an author, we can see how to write. But to serve God, be acceptable to Him, we learn from Jesus. Jesus teaches us to believe and serve and how to love our neighbors sacrificially as we see the cross. Christ gave up himself for the benefit of us all, for the forgiveness of our sin, to give us light and life. Jesus house teaches us how to forgive and be forgiven. Jesus teaches us to give and to receive with thanksgiving. <clears throat> Divine life teaches us to trust God while we serve our neighbor with our carpentry, our painting, and our harvesting. So my friends, on this Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday, we turn from the dark side of our life we receive God's light freely, throwing off our direction, our darkness, and we let Jesus turn on the lights so you and I can see our way home. Amen. And may the peace of God, who surpasses all understanding, in our hearts and minds the true faith, and to life everlasting. Amen. We respond to God's word by singing the last verses of hymn 633, verses 6, 7, and 8.
our gracious God and Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, to continue to be active and involved in the good works prepared beforehand, that we may walk in them. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, and that we should walk in them. We offer ourselves to you, holy Jesus, once again, as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, as our reasonable service of worship. Anoint us to this end for the advance of your kingdom and the purpose of our King. Make us to be fragrant sacrifices and offerings to God our Father and our Lord Jesus. Thanks be to God and to God alone.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all for all people according to their needs. For the church, that we may ever stand faithful to the word and sacrament that Christ suffered, bled, and died to deliver to those who love the Lord and are called to his purpose, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. President Harrison, the president of our synod, for Pastor Ray Murley, the president of our district, and for all servants of the church, that they may be filled with holy, the Holy Spirit as they do the work you gave them to do with excellence and faithfulness. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the women of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League and all auxiliaries of the church, that they continue to live and work in the love and grace of God, and as inspired by the Holy Spirit to offer themselves as acceptable, holy, living sacrifices to God our Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of these United States, President Barack Obama, our representatives and senators, and all public servants, who strive to provide for the needs of the least of these and advocate justice, that the grace and mercy of Christ may be the motivation for every thought, word, and deed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, that their eyes would be opened, their hearts would be filled with the joy of Jesus, their despair comforted, their ears open to hear, and provision would flow from the throne of grace to provide for their every need according to God's grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick, the suffering, the grieving, and the dying, especially those whom we name in our hearts and aloud. Leota, Richard, Elsie, Erna, Denise, Fa, Irvin, Debbie, Marcille, David, Carol, Pastor Joseph, and Pastor Miller. That they may be healed, comforted, consoled, and delivered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who receive the Lord's precious body and blood, they may receive the forgiveness of sins, strengthening of faith, life, and salvation, and be filled with the love of Christ to offer themselves as living sacrifices to Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We submit these prayers, those spoken and those pondered in the silence of our hearts, along with these offerings, for the praise of your glory, for all these and whatever other things you would have us ask, Heavenly Father, we pray for the sake of Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us rise for the prayer. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Together the pledge. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have, and in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
and uh, as custom, the uh, buckets are going to be passed around, and if you can take the change out of your pockets, and if we, even better, if we could just hear the, the swiftness of paper going in there. <laughs> uh, just one announcement, and that is uh, the Lutheran School Association next week, uh, Sunday, is going to have their uh, their uh, annual uh, dinner and our auction. And so there are some booklets available in the, in the narthex from uh, the ushers. Uh, those are uh, a list of all those things that are uh, up, for, uh, up for bid. So if you'd like to, there are also, I think there's some bidder cards in there as well. <coughs> Be generous and uh, God's blessings to you.